car just shoves people out of the way the Jesus. entire way. I was like, dude, get a grip on yourself. There's people here more important than him. More important because there than was. Usher? It was Usher. Usher was a punk. Yeah, but who's more important than Usher? Lots of people. I, Colin Powell was there. Eh, I mean, that's, you know. Based was on the your president opinion. of the United States there? <laughs> Well, he could have been president. He could have been the first Republican black president for sure, at least. Uh, I don't. I don't know if Usher's uh, Republican or not, but he probably. No, no, no. President. I mean, no, uh, Colin, Colin Powell. Powell. Colin Powell, Philly. I know. I'm... Oh, oh, oh! You're making a joke. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm treating it seriously. No wonder. Yeah, now I was practicing my uh, straight face. You're oh, pretty good at it. But would Just you like have uh, said the basket was good enough for Moses? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Would you would you have so you wouldn't have voted for Usher based based on how he treated you? Based Basically, on... all, Usher was a punk and was p pushing people out of the way, yeah. you know, because he felt like it. See, you know what's crazy about that? And this is gonna sound silly, but based on Usher's dance skills, you shouldn't have to push anyone out of the way. You know, when I used he to get just my dance his way through the crowd. Exactly. When I used to get my dance on, especially uh, if I'd go outside and puff a little bit, by the time I came back in, I was moving through those crowds like it was nothing. Yeah. You know? Yeah. But there is a there is a science to that, and some of it's associated with smoking, as well. Um, but you know, yeah, that's just I don't know. Well, geez, I don't know where to go from that. From the science of moving through crowds. Well, yeah, what speaking, is the science of moving through crowds? Well, it has to do with... Um, the sweet sides. Well, so there's like, there's like five basic senses, and then there's a sense that has to do with um, recognizing like... I don't know if it's like recognizing the distance between you and others are like the spatial relations spatial between you. awareness oh okay spatial awareness yeah so yeah it's uh it's one of the senses and i think weed i don't know weed helps with your something with your muscle coordination and really? stuff like really? that it really it has it has something to do with that and i always notice like you know before i would smoke and this is when i kind of enjoyed it more and uh sure you know, for whatever reason. But before I smoked, I kind of feel like I'm crowded in some of these lounge type club type areas, you know, when there's a lot of people. Yeah. And I'm like yeah. awkwardly trying to move through the crowd, getting to and from the bar. And I go outside and smoke. And then I come back in and I'm just like seeing things differently. And like physically- I thought you were saying you went out to smoke cigarettes and just repelled everyone with the smell. <laughs> no, 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 weed, weed, glorious weed. So I'd come back in and I'd be the able real to stuff. <laughs> first see like a path of where to go and then smoothly like sail through that path. And, like, Do you think your, your to give a shit though meter is very low when you smoke and when it's, when it's high, you, I mean, when, when you're not high, you're, you're anxious to, to, to about people's uh, uh, perception of you? And then when you have weed, you're not you're not uh, as concerned, and that might be part of it. Well, yeah, but we're not talking about I'm coming back in, bumping into people, not giving a shit. We're talking right, about right. like I'm able to physically see opportunities where there's openings, and right. I'm physically uh, just uh, a lot more relaxed and aware of my surroundings. I can only describe it as another sense. You know, like gotcha, spatial, gotcha. spatial awareness. Um, yeah. yeah, the sense I don't have because every time I've had a car accident, it's had to do with parking. Hmm. A lot of people have spatial uh, problems, so maybe maybe this 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 is a, you're onto something there, uh, Flav. Yeah, well, so one of the um, is this so, why you think artists do this a lot more than regular folks? Well, you, well, there's a few things. Um, so like focus is one of them right so when you're when you're smoking weed um it allows you to focus on one thing intently uh it can be pretty it can be pretty difficult to multitask you can get lost if you're trying to multitask and you can start just wandering and not get it done but if you have to do one thing 
whether it's like playing jazz, mm -hmm. you know, getting your dance on, doing music, doing something creative, you can focus on it well. Um, but there is there is the thing that allows you to relax a little bit, right? Um, right. And allows you to free a kind of associate. social lubricant. Uh, in a sense, but it's different than that of alcohol, which um, lowers your inhibitions. It's different than that. That just the alcohol just makes you talk to anybody. Oh well, yeah, it's different than the than the uh, lowering of inhibitions. It's um, uh, I, I I ran into this word recently again called flow. Mm -hmm. And this was uh, this was actually uh, talking about uh, a state of mind you can get into when you're playing video games. But of course, it's not just video games. That's also sure. associ associated with music. Uh, it's a free association free uh, state of mind. Yeah, maybe. it's a, uh, maybe. Yeah, it's a. Uh, it, yeah, uh, well, more than a free association, it's like that's like there's just you. And then there's the thing that you're doing. It's like, um, it's not just free association. It's like an intense focus. Uh, it's okay. like, it's, it's when you're in the zone, right? Yeah, yeah. So, so basketball players get it, you know, dancers get it. I used to get it a lot when I was dancing where I yeah. felt like musicians. at some, yeah, musicians, at some point I felt like I wouldn't even take credit for the moves I was doing because I was in such a zone that I was just like allowing it to happen. And it's like on another level. It's a great, it's a great feeling. That's a, a great when feeling. When I danced to, to goth and industrial, I definitely had those moments as well. Uh, yeah, yeah. And it's, it would be personalized to whatever touches you the most or whatever you appreciate the most. Um, right, I right, definitely right. found it in different, different styles of music. Some, some taps into it more than other, but yeah, as long as the inspiration is there, but certainly for basketball players, like uh, theirs taps into adrenaline because it's a, it's a physical thing, right? Right, right. Uh, whereas in video games, it might be, it might be adrenaline also, but... But, but less, a different sense of it, yeah. Yeah, exactly. Less because you're doing a high... Your, your, conne physical. your connectivity in your brain has to go quicker. Exactly, yeah. Things like I don't know that. how better to explain it, but that's, that's how the... Yeah, I felt that high. Yeah, freestyling... Same thing, um, yeah. So it's it's like the flow. So the the weed somehow lets you tap uh, into that a bit, and when you add it to spatial awareness, then it's you know allows you to weave in in and out of the uh, crowds. I don't know. It's like I hate to say this because like it's a it's a controversial opinion, but I'm actually convinced that some of my students actually do do better in school when they're a little bit high that they might have actually be on to something just because they can concentrate yeah well, i mean it's a i'm sorry go on go on please. no you, you can go ahead i was just going to say you know all of our brain chemistry is completely different yeah uh, from from each other so some of them might function much better with with a bit of uh the the chemical qualities of of what whatever weed product they're they're on yeah that's exactly what i was going to say and it's so different from person to person i yeah. mean many people might experience the same thing but many p people might experience different things and instead of taking maybe ritalin maybe some of them are self-diagnosing right. Uh, maybe it'll oh, only work. Cheaper alternative, self too. They're self-medicating. Yeah, yeah there's, there's self-medication, and sometimes that doesn't work, right? Sometimes it only works to a certain extent, and then, you know, not being professionals, the professionals are over... have to take over. <laughs> yeah, not being professionals or overdoing, overindulging. That's why, like, for a while I've been saying we should be teaching... We should be keeping it real with kids and teaching them about moderation instead of like lying to them and just saying don't do drugs including oh, marijuana which is like you know unrealistic. well marijuana is an odd state because I it's it's less harmful it's less harmful than than alcohol or cigarettes but it was still illegal because of the those two industries 
So it's been included in the heart because I would definitely continue to tell kids don't do something like crack or 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 God forsake uh, or heroin, uh, or crystal crystal meth or heroin because yeah. those things you can't ever get off even if you try once. It'll always be in your system. Yeah, I mean the once thing has been refuted uh, as well, certainly, but I mean the point's still taken that there's a huge difference between the harder yeah. stuff and. Uh, I, I would I would like to see moderation as well for things that are quote unquote legalized, and yeah. th that that we we talk to kids straight up about about the the damage. And if you want to see somebody you know on a lifetime of cigarettes, well, we have plenty of old people on bre on on breathing machines that can speak to them and would be happy to speak to them. You know, not a scared straight straight program, but keeping it real. This that's is like what you're going to get. That's like the commercial we used to. Add I think this was a New York commercial, so you might not have seen it, but like, okay. it was this, this guy with like, one of those voice, but who had his yeah the his the voice trachea box taken yeah. out, and he had one of those voice box machines, and he was like, I used to love playing baseball. Now I can't even get into the game. And yeah, that was always like striking to me because I was like, oh my god, this shit really like. Yeah, I mean, the, the, the best way to, 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 to inoculate kids against a certain thing is to show the, the end result. No lie to them. Show them what, it, what it's like, you know, and, and I'm sure you'll have plenty of volunteers who will try and help kids get away from the harm stuff, harmful stuff. Yeah, I mean, for the most part, I mean, kids, you know, kids kind of know what's up and they see, you know, kids like see what crackheads are like. They see what folks are like. I mean, I don't know that necessarily trying to go around scaring them is helping anyone. Uh, I don't think it's scaring them. I think it's arming them with, with the information of what a lifetime does. To, with, yeah, what I'm saying is the way that we're doing it. I just don't oh, know oh, gotcha, that, we're, gotcha. that we're doing that. I don't know that we're doing that. I mean, a lot of the commercials we're are just stupid. They're just okay. stupid and they get laughed at. And um, yeah, a lot of it's just phony. Um, yeah. You know, it's just like phony stuff that doesn't that doesn't really uh, resound. And um, like, for instance, like a lot of people in the hood are like very averse to cocaine because they right. see what crack does. Right. And like, they don't need commercials to like yeah, tell them that. No, no, they see, they, they see, see it what's themselves. around them. Yeah, yeah cocaine they, is like a, a white people drug. Yeah, and they see that themselves. Uh, or like a rich, or like a rich person's drug, because well, then yeah, cause it's that kind of like levels the playing field a little bit. Um, still more excuse white, but levels the playing field a little bit when you get money. But um, disclaimer: I do not support the use of cocaine. <laughs> yeah, and when it comes to weed, um, you know, some people are totally different. Like some people don't uh, do well on weed. Like their mind uh, isn't able to focus. They get lazy. They're not able to do their work, and that's just real for some people. Or they get paranoid. Or yep. Well, yeah, and that's the thing is, like, I will always respect. I will always respect people's choices not to do it. Yeah. I mean, a lot of. I mean, a lot of my friends don't do it. Like, Misha doesn't. Like. Yeah. But like. At the same time, like, they give me the respect to know that I can't stand, like, act like cigarettes or alcohol. Yeah, and the thing is, I mean, for kids, you know, uh, at a certain age, it can definitely stunt their mental growth, so they need to be made aware of that. Um, and then, you know, just always going back to moderation, you know, I mean, if they're having fun every once in a while, at a party, you know, when their work is done on the weekend and, you know, it's uh, not done too often, it can have one effect. Uh, but then, you know, when these kids want to be Snoop Dogg and they want to smoke blunt after blunt every day, all day, that's going to affect some people. And it's going to, um, you know, stunt their potential. So folks I mean, like- you know my, you know my line for them? I tell them, I'm like, I tell them, I'm like, look, I, like, I smoked weed at 17, too. Like, 
you guys are 17. I smoked weed at 17 too. The difference is, is that I waited until I had that diploma in hand to start. Right. That's what I always tell the kids. Yeah. Yeah. And even then you just have to know, you have to know yourself, you know, and like whatever crowd you're in, you may have your boy who has a ton of energy who can smoke all day and get all of his shit done. And then yeah. you may yeah. be the person who just who has to sleep. Not, yeah. Yeah. Who, who just can't, who just can't operate on that level. And there was a couple of my friends growing up that, that they never smoked weed, not because they didn't like it, but because the effect on them was they just passed the hell out. They were just yeah. so, it just tired them out so much. Yeah. So it was like nothing. It was like a, like a, like NyQuil. Yep. And that's, yeah, there's so, so many different effects on so many different people. Every individual is different. And I think. Yeah. If, and that's where the term into couch comes from. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, even for some people, it doesn't even matter if it's sativa, if it's whatever, it's like still. Stuff. Yeah, it's, it's, it's apparently it's it yeah. didn't matter to a couple of my friends. Yeah. They tried it all, and it was just like, <sighs> yeah, for sure. I but mean, yeah. honestly, it puts me to sleep sometimes. Like that's why I, but that's why I'm choosing not to. Well, other than the fact that, like, under normal non-COVID circumstances, I actually have to go to work. Like, right. that's why I'm not really doing it during the day because I don't want to spend my day sleeping. <laughs> Yeah. I I mean I might do that anyway, but at least like at least I know there's a good reason for it <laughs> if I do that. That's if a I cool uh, all day sober. That's a cool shirt, the poetic justice. It came it came Oh I from thought you meant my, my, my captains of it came uh, from the clear cult racket. pop culture. Oh it I didn't know I didn't see that. Racket. It yeah, I have really they're nice. like Captain America, Captain Hook. Uh, Captain Crunch, Captain Planet, Kermit the Frog as the as the Treasure Club uh, Island Captain. It's yeah. a pretty hilarious shirt. Yeah. Fortunately, it gets lost when you can't. You only see like the top two guys. Yeah, you can only see the top two. Uh, how, how long ago did you get that uh, two two box shirt? Yesterday, it was on oh, the okay. clearance rack at TJ Maxx when I oh, went. Oh, cool. Yeah, yeah, walking. you were talking about that the other day. Well, yeah, they, um, they sell everything in TJ Maxx. <laughs> so, so Flav, what's your convention stories? Tell me, tell me, you, you, you have to have been to conventions as a fellow nerd. So what, tell, tell us some of your stories. We were talking about that before. Yeah, sorry, man. I, I don't have any. Uh, no cool I mean, convention stories? No, I mean, I, I don't really... I mean, I appreciate the the culture and I appreciate folks who, you know, uh, I appreciate Trekkies and like, you Ish know, and Star older. Wars and like that's what I was gonna say, comic like, book stuff, comic but I'm cards, not, I'm not a- of that, uh, I'm not of that ilk. I've never, never been to a comic, comic con. Oh, they're never fun, been man. To, yeah, I'm just not like, I'm, I'm not really like a fellow nerd in that sense. Um, gotcha. I just, you know, I, I like, I like uh, the original series and Next Generation, and I like some of the, you know, Star Wars movies, especially the first three, and then sure, some of them course, yeah. are horrible, and then some of them got uh, good again. Um, but yeah, but I'm not, I never. The real comic book stuff, like, is it the real comic book Comic Con, like nerd culture stuff? I feel like that should be tabled for when we're not off that ish. <laughs> Yeah. Um, well, you know, whatever. Whatever. It's certainly. Uh, yeah. I. I don't. I don't know enough about it to, to uh, talk about it as much as you or Ish does. To be honest, like, I stopped reading comic books when I was a kid, but right. I never stopped loving the characters and, you know, stopped watching like, you know, the yeah. cartoons or the animated series or right, right. the animated movies or all of the movies. You, you became know. more of a casual uh, enjoyer of the, of the, of the genre. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. Definitely more casual. Um, you know, the and I don't mean that night- in a bad way. I mean, I'm just, just, just what it no, is. No, that's, I mean, I, I, yeah, that's, that's fine. I mean, I think, uh, what is it? 1989 Batman is still like my favorite, one of my favorite movies. Yeah, so was that the Michael Keaton one? Yeah, that was eighty nine, right? Was that eighty nine? Yes, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Somehow I have a good 
memory for the actual dates. The bad I don't know. Movies. Don't ask me. I wasn't allowed to see R-rated movies. Oh, yeah. I guess that was R-rated, right? Yeah, it was. The, the, it was the first uh, comic book movie that was R-rated. Yeah, that was... Uh, well, with Jack Nicholson, soundtrack. you knew it was going to be R-rated. <laughs> yeah. Well, I don't think... I think at that point, I wasn't even able to see movies. I wasn't even allowed to see PG movies. So. Wait, how old were you? How old were you? Yeah. Five. Oh, my God. Now you, oh, you well, are PG a baby. PG is like... Uh, your folks must have really taken the uh, rating... Uh, the rating... Well, the funny thing is, they took it literally with movies, but not with TV shows when they started adding in ratings okay. to TV shows. I mean, like I said, it was it's the weirdest thing in the world. Like, I was allowed to watch South Park from day one. Like, I was allowed to watch South Park when yeah, I was had like... They know, had, had they known what, what you were watching, probably? No, I watched it with my dad. Oh, okay. But... So I was allowed to watch South Park, but like not allowed to see R-rated movies. I think it was, but I think it was more like the difference, and people thought that was the weirdest thing on earth, but I think it was more of like, you know, that they wanted me to see, that they want, that they were okay with me seeing toilet humor, but not violence. Well, yeah, I mean, South Park wasn't considered rated R, right? Well, it was TVMA when it first came out. Oh, okay. That's, Which is okay. like TV's equivalent to rated R. Oh, I see. I see. Interesting. Because it was considered like ridiculously shocking. Right. But I think I think there was also a difference between like they're not going to let me run off to the movies with my friends like if, and watch an R-rated movie until I'm, old, until I'm a little bit older. Like I didn't think not they didn't make me wait till I was actually 17 yeah. to be allowed to see R-rated movies. Sure. Um, I th but they waited until I was at least in high school. Yeah. But I think South Park was different because like as a TV show and my dad watched it too. So like if they said something that I had something crude that I had no idea what it was he'd be there to tell me not to repeat it before I actually went to school and repeated it. <laughs> right, right, right. Yeah, there's probably a, uh, a double standard with the cartoons as well, you know, to keep it real. Well, yeah. And I'm, but, I mean, <laughs> my dad was also the one who went to go who took himself to the movies to go see, by himself, to go see Dogma, just because he wanted to know what the big deal was. Oh, okay. that's cool. That's cool. About it. Like, rem like, remember when all the Catholics were protesting? Yeah. Like, he went, he took himself to see Dogma because he wanted to see why the Catholics were so pissed off. <laughs> and... But he didn't want to take me with him, like, when it was in the theaters, like, just because he didn't know what the content sure, was. Sure, sure. He didn't know what it was. <laughs> but he comes home, and mind you, Dogma, like, you know, I'm a Kevin Smith fan. Dogma is one of my favorites of his yeah. movies, actually. But my dad comes, uh, comes home from seeing Dogma, and literally, I ask him how the movie was, and he says, I don't understand what the hell all these Catholics are all up in arms about. Like, it's not that bad. It's just like, it's just like a couple of angels and like a couple of dudes like Beavis and Butthead running around making asses of themselves. That's a good description. That's a very good description. Yeah. I thought it was pretty... Then when I actually saw Dogma when I was older, I thought I was like, yep. Actually, Dogma did. appeals to the best side of Catholics. That, that, would, be the, uh, that would be my takeaway. That maybe it, maybe for them it was insulting that somebody would portray angels as normal people or 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 normal humans, but the the takeaway is that they were on a mission, a higher mission, and that they weren't going to be seduced by the golden calf, which was you know their 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 uh, silky for um for uh, for uh, uh, McDonald's and and Mickey Mouse and all that stuff. The golden calf, meaning movies. <laughs> Movie, yeah, yeah, exactly, movies. <laughs> but like, 
I don't know. I feel like that the people who were protesting against dogma were the people who like didn't quite understand the purpose of satire. Yeah, like, yeah, they don't. Well, I mean, do these people ever? Well, yeah, no. it's not. It, it's not. They're the same people who protest outside of, of other denominations of churches because they say the and message is wrong. Parenthood. <laughs> yeah, and Planned Parenthood and stuff like that. Which, uh, well, yeah. this is even this is even worse though because like Planned Parenthood, you know, if you don't believe in choice, or I, I shouldn't even put it that way because they don't they don't see it like that. If you if you are pro lifer, then by uh, you know. Uh, uh, by striking or uh, shit, what's the what's the word? I'm protesting? Protesting? Uh, well, well, not really picketing. protesting. Picketing. It's kind of like yeah, demonstrating. Sorry, I was being oddly specific. By demonstrating in front of Planned Parenthood, you're doing something that you feel is affecting many lives. Right. Uh, you know, like actual lives, right? right. Whereas, right. like. Protesting a movie is just like more like your values. Yeah. Right? yeah. So it's, it's, like, it's, a, it's kind of a selfish um, activity. Well, it's kind of like, a, oh my God, like people are being corrupted by like this country's filthy values. So we yeah. got to do something about it. Yeah. It's, uh, yeah, it kind of makes you look old and curmudgeon y. But, you know, that's, uh, that's how people have always been. And then, and then they always drive the sales up. So, you know, yeah. I always go back to, 90s hip hop, like when Reverend Calvin Butts and Dolores Tucker are, um, you know, literally taking a steamroller and hey, steamrolling over steam all these rolling. CDs. First of all, steam you had to buy those CDs. Dirty Luke, Uncle Luke down in South Florida. Oh, yep. Oh, them too. So, first of all, you had to buy these CDs That's before right. you steamrolled them. And then, second of all, what great press. Oh, like, absolutely. What, what kid does it? You can't now? buy that. You can't buy that. Exactly. What kid does it now want to go go buy that? As a matter of fact, has anyone ever used that footage in one of their videos? I was like, Uncle I think Luke I think person. Uncle Luke did. Really have used the video. He was the, serious. He was very savvy. Don't don't. Yeah. He may be thug life like all the way, and he may his his subject matter may be a little crude. But don't yeah. get it wrong. He's a smart smart uh, dude. He he's, is. He's got he, it going on. He goes down in history as being a part of the whole free speech uh, movement. Absolutely. You know, he's uh, probably in. He was good friends at the time. With, well, he, I should say always with uh, with uh, uh, MC Hammer. So it was a okay. weird friendship where, you know, MC Hammer was this king of clean and mm -hmm. he was friends with the dirtiest of the dirty. Yeah. Yeah. That's, well, you that's know a good uh yeah, synopsis. I was reading a couple years back that I guess that Uncle Luke actually ran into like you know, 20 years later whatever, after after two live crew stopped really making music right. Uncle Luke still had trouble passing a background check to coach high school football Oh yeah, I think I heard about his that. lyrics. Yeah, I think you were telling me about that. Yeah, I mean that's like, that's very odd. Like, w like, I mean, w was that based on an arrest made, or what was that based on? I think Uncle Luke is a felon a of some of some sort of thing, but that was not based on that. Right, because I just in my mind, like, for some, uh, you know, coaching association or for some school to say no, you can't be a coach, you know, based on your morality it's like well that's not that's not I up mean, for you to decide unless there's actually a record of me on file somewhere that says something you know what i mean like legally legally yeah, yeah. anyways yeah i mean snoop dogg passed a background check for the same purpose so go figure yeah well that's see that's a good question like because that's it's what California. I mean, like though, versus That's California Florida. versus Florida. Exactly. Well, m well, more than that, though, Luke, this is what I'm saying is like, Luke, I think is actually in the books as being like, um, what would you call it? If you were in a courtroom, this would be the plaintiff, the plaintiff. Well, more than a plaintiff. He's like, he, he was like, um, Evidence? you could actually cite, 
uh, well, more than evidence. You can actually cite his court case as being like a um, a, fun, a, a fundamental, point. yeah, yeah, a point. yeah, yeah, yeah I, a, I fundamental, a fundamental court case that you, you can actually cite. So yes, yeah, absolutely, the people versus yeah, Luther Campbell. Exactly, exactly, the people versus Luther Campbell, a precedent that can be cited, you know, uh, during a court I'll case. Whereas, think. whereas Snoop's is like, you know, it was important. It was important in the hip hop, but I think Luke's had already happened by that point. I think. Oh yeah. Um, oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah oh, I, I got to apologize for falling asleep yesterday. I didn't really mean it. I was just exhausted. Well, we figured. <laughs> yeah. We figured okay. that you didn't mean it. Well, right. don't don't feel too bad. Other people fall asleep on us all the time. <laughs> I yeah. I usually fall asleep on on shows and uh, and and recordings and stuff, but I, I don't really mean it. It's my schedule for sleeping is all screwed up. Yeah. No, I I hear you. I've had some uh, very messed up sleeping. And you know, because you're in the same business, sort of. Uh, I was gonna. Uh, well, I was gonna say, yeah, like when I'm when I'm out uh, on assignment, my schedule is regimented. But when I'm waiting. In between oh, assignments, terrible. my schedule terrible. just gets wild, and it's like I eventually learned like I should discipline myself, so I'm still going to sleep at a regular time. Waking I tried, up. I tried so um, hard, but I can't, I can't fight that fight, brother. Really? No, it's hard. It's hard for me. Fight, sleeping at a regular time um, mm -hmm. insists that I don't have the the tremendous amount of nerve damage that I have, which okay. is always constant pain. So, uh, like, I'll lie down, and three hours later, I'm still looking at the wall in the mm -hmm. darkness. So I, I just get up and start doing stuff because might as well not waste time until you can finally get tired enough get to, to yeah exactly. Have some None of my family has ever understood that ever. You tried like CBD and stuff like that. I've tried a lot of different things, a lot. And, and some things work, but some things work a little too well, if you know what I mean. Like, they'll knock me out, and they'll knock me out for, like, longer than I intend to sleep. Oh, okay. I see. I see. Well, yeah, you should probably, you know, uh, not be doing too much heroin, if that's what you're... <laughs> I, do I look fit enough to do heroin, brother? Look at me. <laughs> Uh, I what, wish I was attractive enough to do heroin, but unfortunately, that's not, that doesn't happen, bro. What's, uh, I feel like one of the guys that works for Howard Stern was in that boat. Um, oh, Baba what, Louie, maybe? Oh, uh, was it Baba I Louie? Remember, I, I remember a story of somebody that was in drug... Uh, yeah, counseling. I feel like it wasn't Baba Louie. It was, if I heard his name, I would know it. I can see his face. Was it the comedian that was, that was yes. eventually kicked off? I think so. I forget his name. But uh, I, I'm trying to remember his drug of choice. I want to say heroin, but he uh, was like a, a bigger, he was a bigger guy. And yeah, I think yeah. he made fun of himself as one of the few people that wasn't doing it right. Yeah, because, exactly. You know, exactly. He, but uh, he was he like one losing. of the few, few larger heroin addicts. Yeah. Well, yeah, because heroin basically destroys your appetite. So you, 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 you that heroin chic everyone talks about yeah. is about appetite, really. Yep. Well, and it also messes with your digestive system. I've heard that. I'm people, sure. I've heard sure. that people withdrawing from heroin get get the shits, for lack of a better term. Yeah, I think that was in that movie, uh, one of the famous movies from the '90s. Train spotting. Oh, uh, train spotting. Didn't train you like spotting, sh yeah. shit his sheets or something in that movie? Yes. Yes. Now, see, I love that, that movie. that's very interesting because, like, I only watched that movie like maybe once or or whatever. So that stuck with me, but I remembered it wrong. I didn't realize he was going through withdrawal. I thought yeah, that's what yeah. heroin did to you. Oh, wow. Until later well, it on. It constipates you. Yeah, exactly. Well, later on, I was like, wait a minute, constipate? Then why did he shit the sheets in that movie? But, <laughs> but we're finally putting it together because he was right. going through that's right. withdrawal. Because, because he was getting his life, he was getting his shit together, basically. Well, he getting, it just happened to go all over the sheets. <laughs> well, the whole time it was doing heroin, like there was like you know a a backup of the pipes going on, like the. Oh, I right, like it, right. Emily. You are poetic. Look at this and shit. Then, well, and she's then, got the shirt on, so. Exactly, exactly what I was <laughs> thinking about. Tupac will be proud. There's like he a backup be. of the pipes going on, so. Right. Like, <laughs> so now, if you could put heroin. that to a beat, you 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 would outsell Kanye. <laughs> but. 
that doesn't take much. I don't think these days. No, he's he's actually good. You know what? I'll give Kanye credit for one thing. He's he knows music. He's a very good musician. He's but musically connected. He's definitely he, he, no matter he, what he does. I I don't like him as soul. a person because he's he's obnoxious. But yeah. um, but music but, is in his soul. But music, he knows. He knows music. And although he yeah. says some ridiculously dumb things, even about music. Like he said, the guitar is a terrible instrument, and I said. Are you serious? <laughs> what is that's just funny to me? Like that just makes me laugh. Like that yeah, sounds how, like something a co- a comedian would say. And then I don't know. I don't know how much what he says that. is exactly for that reason, though. That shock value reason. Did he follow that up with anything? No, he just said. Oh well, yeah, he said I can do anything that the guitar can do in my in my music studio without a guitar. How stupid a, a, an instrument! And I was like. That's oh, a, that that's, doesn't mean anything. That's not a good look. See, it's one thing. Now he's starting to piss musicians off. That's not good. Yeah. It's yeah. it's bad enough that his political rantings are as oh, bad. Oh, that's that's that's, that's, uh, that's atrocious. Okay, so he's already like dissed books. You know, he said he's yeah, not a fan of I, books. With, with 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 two parents that were educators, that's yeah. like the the biggest sin you could commit. Well, you almost wonder if part of that is uh, the reason, reading? right? reading problem well no i was gonna say like maybe in a maybe like he's uh i don't want to say like rebelling in a yeah sense. That's, that's true that's true you know maybe he grew up in a strict educational oh, I'm, household I'm almost sure he did but you're probably right there's probably also some reading issues there probably uh, dyslexia maybe uh, that's there's what probably thinking. something but i mean the quote is and the, the odd thing is there's a little bit of truth in this quote but he says yeah i'm not a a fan of books, you know, they'd be like too long and the people yeah. just like, just keep talking and talking, um, you know, when they could have said what they were saying and far less words. I'm like, yeah, I'm not gonna lie. There are definitely oh, sure. books There's where I'm like, they could have shaved off a few sure. chapters that did nothing for me. And the setup was just unnaturally long and interesting, but I'm still not gonna, agree with that sentiment no uh, not i can being never a fan of books books is, an odd books thing to is say. my books is my 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 home my home even more than the computer i i, I identify with books more yeah. uh, and like you can see around my around my room it's just filled with books because this is what i love guys you yeah. know and and i've spent Actually, a lifetime all I see is an octopus well hold on <laughs> hold on i can i can fix that uh as soon as i get the right window up Choose virtual background. Done. Five hours later. <laughs> no, no. So, so like that's just the that's just one out of out of one shelf. I have like thirty more shelves like this. And yeah, if um, I had the space, I'd hold on to books. My thing is like read them and then kind of give them away because I live in New York City and I. Just, yeah, your 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 space is at a premium. I understand. Yeah. Well, but I there is, I read uh, ebooks now on my oh, phone. Yeah. Yeah, I haven't I haven't gone there yet, even though it does make sense. I'm still kind of old school with the, the oh, touch I, books. I, I much more prefer paper. I'm being very honest with you, Emily. I, I respect that you still read, but unfortunately, I can't. I read so I read so much for my job on the computer that it's, yeah. I can never identify it with pleasure. Yeah, it's and we're yeah, that's true. We do so much on the computer as it is. And on our phones as it is, the adding, yeah. adding books. Although more. I think it's brilliant, it's giving it's giving writers another medium for uh, sales, and that's yeah. awesome. That that breaks through the uh, the publisher uh, monopolies on on on. And for who, people who don't want to take up space. Absolutely, and um, it's more efficient. Or chop down trees, or. But it's or also the thing like, is, that chopping down trees for books is actually the the one of the wisest thing you can do because they're totally books are one hundred percent recyclable, and and they they decay at a at a, at a nice steady rate. Well, so, we're talking about different things, though, Raul. Okay. Um, because something is recyclable doesn't mean you're going to uh, replace the original wood, right? No, no. Like if you're talking down. about if you're talking about like the chopping down the rainforest for 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 that, I understand that, and I'm yeah. I'm not in favor of that. Yeah. But farms, like I was telling you about, my cousin who works in the um, 
in the, you. in the in the in the thing. That's much to me. That's like a hundred percent better. Hundred percent better. No, no, that's definitely better. I mean, it still takes energy and fossil sure, fuels sure. and delivery. But what does it, man? What does it? Well, well, that's the point, though, right? Like when we when we look at our planet, like the idea of recycling, like it, like the the phrase is reduce, reuse, recycle. The right, reason that right. recycle is dead last in that phrase is because it's the most harmful out of those three. Right. So right. like if we actually like just reduce our consumption like in the first and place. And reuse things before we even have to recycle them. Yeah, and re yeah, exactly. Then we can do better. But no, I, I definitely get your point. Like using uh -huh. Easter baskets to send babies down the river. <laughs> exactly. <you see? laughs> a so little you Moses a little Moses vacation just for you. He came around, Emily. I'm proud of you. Emily oh, you around. too. You too. I'm going to have to separate you two. I, no, 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 no. He, he, should take the, he should take the heat for that. That was it. Oh, yeah, gotcha, that's, gotcha. That's true. I was, co I was, playing, I was playing good co-host on that. No, I, I, don't, I blame Ish on that one. <laughs> that's, he knows that's, fine. I, that's fine. He knows I blame him on that one. I think Ish likes it, so it doesn't matter. Exactly. <laughs> He's, he told Speaking me, of Wish, where is, where's all our people, man? Tonight is usually is packed. On a Saturday? Not necessarily. I mean, you, Raul, we're very... Uh, it's kind of random around here. The only, the only gotcha. day that's uh, actually... Um, the only day that's been reoccurring is Friday. Fridays, okay. Um, and that's been that. the day, yeah, and that's been the day we've had the most people. But other than that, we've never had a real schedule. My attitude was always just say yes whenever uh, Ish sure. wants to go. That way sure. I can make sure we're on it. Unless I'm feeling like it's been too many back-to-back -back days and I want to rest. It's, yeah, actually yeah. Very, it's actually very interesting because at one point, um, Joey – had this idea let's do it every day so we can like build our skills and practice and i initially said yes to that and then ish i uh, heard about that and he was like are you sure about that like that sounds like a lot and then i think after doing it a few days i realized that i didn't want to do it every day because a lot of what we do is uh you know just segue yeah, yeah. and spontaneous yeah, yeah. Yeah, and yeah. if we were doing it every day, like it drains know, it away. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah, I no, got you. It makes it seem no too regimented. Problem. Yeah, not even regimented, but just what in the world would we talk about unless we were like, unless we were like, you know, really like on some Daily Show writers who are like every day looking at the news, writing what's going on, and then reporting. Well, you shouldn't pay attention to Joey today's... too much. Joey's a power bottom, so you know it's. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> Well, Is no, this I thought I need to know. <laughs> no, I, I mean, I, I definitely entertained the idea, uh, tried it, and then rejected it. You know, so it's, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. you know, I'm, I'm kind of open that way. I, I thought about the idea, and we're um, not talking about the power bottom idea. We're talking about Joey suggesting something. Anyway, <laughs> go on, go on. Should I, should I? I mean, I, I have a good imagination, and I can put context and words together. So I yeah, think yeah, I know yeah. what that means. But should I ask? Yeah, oh my god, you don't know what that means? That's hilarious. I yeah, mean, I, I assume, assume, with the mind I, assume the I know what it means. Believe you, you, you know what Space it means. It's not, it's not a secret. It's not a okay. secret uh, okay. hidden it's meaning. So, all right, so it means what I think it means. Thank you. Okay, that's all I needed to know. And yet, I'm the one with the mind in the gutter. <laughs> yes, of course. I, I, I look, yep, I think these things, you. I never say them, but. Yep. Yes. Well, but I that's okay. Emily, I you, that's you have no filter. I don't have a filter. Nope. And it's good because you're kind of like flipping gender norms by being the one with the mind in the gutter. So it works. Sure. Works for this show. Totally works. Um, or just having no filter in general. Yeah. I was going to say something, but I'm like, probably shouldn't bring up that name because I really don't want to keep giving that person shine. So I'm actually right. not going to. Okay. Gonna bring All right. Up Let's switch to something name. else then. Could have been. Uh, it was. Do, do you know who the rapper My Son is? No, I have you? no idea. Emily, do you know who My Son I is? I do. I do. You do. You do. Yeah. Well, 
he was critical of uh, Akon. For, oh, I know what's I know what's coming for working okay. with that specific person. With yeah, Rainbow for, Boy. yeah, yeah, for yeah, working with that specific person. And Akon's funny to me because he's not. Akon is like pretty comfortable in his skin. Yeah, and so it's kind of hard to like rile him up and he's just laughing the whole time like he just kind of knows who he is and like my son is like and you should know because you were in jail and you're a street dude and how could you run with so and so and so and so and then Akon's just laughing the whole time saying look like if I can you know uh, find a way to get through to this person and be a positive influence then I will um, blah 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 it was just a very interesting it was well, here's an interesting the thing dynamic too, like Akon has said, like Akon said at one point that like, and I say this all the time too, like that honestly, it was the guys he was running with, <laughs> Rainbow yeah. Boy, I mean, like it was like a stupid move on their part to like, it was a stupid move on their part to involve him in their actual street business and right. it was a stupid move on his part to not just say no, but their uh, yeah. they should, their asses should have. He was the one making the money. Their asses should have protected him. Like, do you yeah. see Cardi B running around doing the street stuff in the Bronx, even though she's still technically a Bloods member? You know right. what I mean? Right. Like, well, you, protect you know, the person that's making you money and the person the that's going to be recognizable. It's an age-old stereotype of hip hop that unfortunately gets perpetuated because the the argument that you just use has been the same ones that they're still using in regards to Tupac and they're like listen Tupac like Tupac ended up selling like 75 million records worldwide they were like this guy should not have been involved in street level beefs and business if anything he could have been like you know, maybe some kind of shot caller or something, but he should not have been getting his hands dirty the way that he was. That guy should have been protected at all costs. He was the, he was like the biggest star. He was like, he was the crown jewel. He was the cash cow. Yeah. He was the biggest rapper in the world. One of the biggest rappers in the history of the world. And he was allowed to like get his hands dirty and ultimately it led to his demise so like people are like yeah like if you're really or like at some point if you're you know involved in the streets there's a level of um there's a level of smarts and there's a level of like business acumen and it's like yeah we're <laughs> you know you don't see like the you don't see like mafia yeah, see. bosses like doing dirt you know yeah of that's like not. a few levels separation that's a few levels removed, and I'm not yeah. really trying to compare him to that level, but at the same time, like, yeah, I think... But at the same time, doing street-level things when you're making hundreds of millions of dollars or a just year... when you're recognizable. Well, well, he never made... He never made anywhere he, close... He never really? made anywhere close to that amount of money. I mean, first of all, hundreds of millions, you're only talking about a handful of people uh, who make that in hip-hop. And that's going to be the Jay Z's, the Nas's. I thought I thought he would. Kanye. I thought he did. No. no, I was wrong. I was wrong. No, unfortunately, that was a time when when the CEOs were were kind of eating a larger chunk, you know, anywhere yeah. from your Puff yeah. Daddies to your Suge Knights, but also the companies they worked for. They also like were subsidiaries, like. You know, Suge Knight kind of had an, I don't know if it was considered an imprint or what, but um, at the end of the day, Suge Knight worked for Interscope. Right. Um, and worked for like someone else, you know, so Viacom, it's not like, I think, yeah. Yeah, so it's not like, it's just not what it was. Um, but even Tupac's mother was talking about like, uh, like stuff like a few things in his name and a few things not in his name. And dying without uh, having a without lot of a money. Well, without having a lot of money. Um, afterwards, I think they, the Tupac um, estate started, you know, 
gathering the uh, resources gathering resources accumulating money watching what they said yes or no to but yeah unfortunately a lot of our stars are not as rich as we think they are and certainly mm. weren't now people I, like I, Snoop, that stunned me that stunned me man yeah yeah it's stunning um i've been following it the whole time now like there are there are people like snoop who learned the business and right. um we could definitely thank master p for that who was like right, one of right, the right. largest uh he was like the best businessman. And he even will tell you like, yeah. He got never... an NBA, bro. He was, yeah. He wasn't an NBA. He was an NBA. Yep. He, uh, I saw some stories Smart about man. like he was ready to, <laughs> he was ready to like throw down uh, a few times with some of his fellow NBA members. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, that guy was really smart, admitted that he couldn't rap really well, but he knew the business like no one. And it was a Better, very yeah. shrewd businessman. And sure. uh, Snoop was able to learn from that, but if it wasn't for that, you know, he wasn't. We wouldn't have we wouldn't have uh, self-made uh, rap, rap moguls. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. But then again, I'm not a real big believer in the self-made, like I've talked about it before. Uh, so, yeah, everybody right. has to learn from somebody. Everyone learns from someone, and everyone has help. Network, and, uh, yeah. and even the work the workers are are putting in work for you too, right? Absolutely. But you have ARs and you have lawyers and you have collaborators, yeah. and producers, and, uh, and all sorts of people. So stylists. people filming your music videos. Yeah, yeah, you got people you're working with. But I think, like, I guess, like, what I remember, like, reading Akon said, and what I would agree with is that why would you? It's not like not even about who's the cash cow. Like, why would you put some? Why would you put the celebrity of the group to be with you when there's when you're in on street beef? Like, I'm sorry, but if you have like, if you have like hair the color of like a fucking troll doll, you're easily recognizable. You're easily recognizable, and their yeah. dumb asses sent him back on the subway. With an AK. On the and subway? Yes. They, That's they, ridiculous. What situation are you speaking of? The the person who's the person who you shouldn't be named, yeah. who you don't want to name. <laughs> that particular artist, one of the one of the crimes that was detailed, one of the robberies, when they robbed Jay Prince's people. Oh, they, that's that's already not good. But, you don't you don't mess with Jay Prince. Well, that's like he's like the boogeyman of he's like the boogeyman of rap. He's like the didn't. one who taught um, taught Master P his like business sense. But basically, like what happened is that like what happened there was there was beef when when Rainbow when Rainbow Boy got kicked out of like got. There was beef something about like him going to Texas and not checking in with Jay Prince. Okay. And his boys decided to like decided to retaliate and okay. robbed some people coming out of the Rap a Lot Records office in New York. And wait, 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 wait. Um oh okay, I get I get you. I get you. Okay. And then and then they had like person with troll doll hair with them and mm -hmm. when they heard sirens and thought they were going to get caught mm -hmm. they threw the gun at him and told him to take the subway back to Brooklyn and dude sits on the subway face covered up in a hoodie like Kenny from South Park desperately like like all the way from friggin Times Square to like Utica Avenue on the A line. Did he have a backpack or something, or like? Un no, it was under the, like the hoodie was a zip up and it was under oh. the hoodie. This is what I was reading supposedly, but, like, I mean, somebody who is a celebrity. Yeah, not that's to mention ridiculous. somebody who, not to mention somebody. Is recognizable. Who somebody, who would be recognizable even if they weren't a celebrity. Yeah, like, right. Like, let's be real. Like, Identifying if somebody, marks, yeah. If somebody looked like that, like, 
yeah. walked around my neighborhood, I would know who the hell they were after like yeah. three days, even yeah. if they weren't a celebrity. Like, yeah. like why? Like that's just that that's just being bad at crime. I'm sorry. Well, and it also lets you know that they're using they're like using him to an extent, right? They're a using him, or b they like panicked and they didn't have any like any they didn't plan? have any strategy. Yeah, they didn't have any plan for strategy. It's like that's, the, uh, it's. That's, I mean, it writes itself amateur like level a, crime. It writes itself like a very funny, like I think someone should make a story out of it that's like highly comedic, you know, like a dark humor level movie. Yeah, because it's seriously like it. It it reads like a comedy of errors. <laughs> like yeah. I'm just like what, like, and that's honestly why like um. And I know different people see things like differently, yeah. but that's that's why I personally have a little bit less sympathy for the guys he was for the guys that he testified against because they were dumbasses getting him involved in the first place in my yeah. opinion <laughs> yeah, for certain you know I kind of feel like it's uh everyone kind of got caught up in this fantasy, you know? I think for them, they got caught up with a celebrity who they probably thought it was cool that a celebrity wanted to do dirt with them. And then of course he got caught up in this fantasy where he got to be like a tough guy, you know? Exactly. But it's like, I mean, I think it was like a, a, like a symbiotic relationship of using each other. Yeah, they were definitely using each other. Yeah, but like, yeah, for certain. What are we talking about now? Uh, we're talking about he who shall not be named. Oh yeah, never mind. Um, but yeah, we're talking about how he was using the street level guys he was running with, and how they were using him. Oh, that's no uh, surprise. But you know, at least, at least, uh, in Tupac's case there was kind of a real reason, right? Like for him, he thought like handling his business with these guys was like, he's kind of like a soldier who is down to do the same things that he's Or like he just wants to say like, you know, he wants to be like that manager at the supermarket who won't tell the employees to take out the trash if they won't take out the trash Ex themselves. Exact exactly. And he was also trying to get protection from the guys who had shot him on the East Coast. And uh, he was getting that level of protection, but he was also showing I heard his a guys. Story. I heard a story about the Cypress Hill gang having a meeting with like the, uh, the elder dons of, of, of La Eme, which is uh, the Mexican mafia. Okay. Um, and and they, they basically said when they had beef with uh, with the West Coast rappers, that, that, that they, ha they were called into a meeting and said, listen, the Latinos have your back, and 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 they were just kind of stunned. Like, what did he mean? Oh, what you're talking about, Cypress Hill was. Yeah, Cypress this? Hill. Cypress Hill was told this by some of the oldest and strongest members of Miami. Yeah, well, um, you know, uh, Be Real alluded to the fact that his father was involved in something. He didn't say exactly what. But uh, he said it was like deeper than, he just kind of said it was deeper than gangs. And I didn't really know what he meant by that. Um, well, they were both Cuban. So uh, they come from my background. And there, uh -huh. there, is, a, there is a Cuban mafia in America that, that okay. runs stuff in, in Florida and, and Union City, Jersey and stuff. Okay. So, so there, there is, just like every immigrant population, there's, mm -hmm. there's, always, there's always a deeper criminal organization behind them. Right. Or inside of them, actually preying on them, usually. Yeah. Are you familiar with Royal Flush at all? No. What is that? Oh, uh, he, uh, he was, a, you know, kind of a, um, I guess you would call him a street, a street rapper from the yeah. mid-90s. And he's I don't got a... He wasn't huge, but he was great. His album, he had an album called Ghetto Millionaire, which I okay. highly recommend if you're into 90s hip hop. And oh, yeah. uh, it was like Nas-like level 
street raps, uh, especially cool. when Nas was coming out with albums that weren't that great. But he's got a, a song on there with Noriega, and it's like Cuban Connection, flexing, wildin', sippin' don't pee by the gallon. So I guess, yep. I guess uh, he must have been like part Cuban or something, as yeah. is as is uh, Noriega, I guess. Noriega's Puerto Rican. Yeah, and he's half something else, Cuban, I think. Well, but or, Cubans or no, and Puerto Ricans half, are very related. Or no, unless he's half Cuban and, and half, uh, unless he's half black and half Puerto Rican. But uh, yeah, he's half black and half Puerto Rican, I think. Oh, okay. So maybe the Cuban connection is Royal Flush then. I don't know, Probably. for whatever reason on the hook, he's saying Cuban connection. Or maybe he's just talking about something else. Maybe he's yeah, just could be. About a could Cuban be. connection. Um, but uh, yeah, what were we talking about? I'll tell about? you that my people are industrious no matter what they put their minds to. So I, it wouldn't surprise me. It wouldn't surprise me to find uh, like, a, like a national Cuban mafia chain. Yeah. So, I mean, what I was saying about Tupac was like, unlike he who shall not be named, Tupac really wanted and needed protection, and like um, I agree with that. Unfortunately, you know, the, the outcome is 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 that he needed it desperately. Yeah, he needed it desperately, and I don't think he went. About yeah, and it the he right didn't way. have it when he needed it. No, no, he didn't. Well, he didn't go about it the right way. See, like to me, he actually did have protection, but um, I don't know. A lot of things went wrong that night that he died. I mean, first of all, there's like. I think they were as, aiming for Shug too. Yeah, to well, there's that. There's that, yeah, and then like there's the like, why mission. didn't, uh, why didn't Pac have his vest on when he almost always had his vest on, um, you know? And then, and then there was like stupid stuff like, you know, Pac is like hanging out of his car like he likes to do, and like these girls are noticing him, and they're like saying what's up to the girls, and that's how they got noticed by the shooters who were right. looking for them. And were unsuccessful finding them, but now these girls are like, "Hey, Tupac!" Like blah blah blah, and he's like saying, "What's up?" Back to them, and that's how they get noticed. So it's like he's not wearing his vest, he's not keeping a low profile, especially after getting into this beef he had gotten into, um, you know, in the lobby of the uh, casino. And it's like, <clears throat> even some of his like friends and like street partners were saying he should have moved a certain way. I think Richie Rich was one of his musical collaborators. Like he should have chilled. Yeah, he should have chilled and he should have just like kept a low profile. Um, you just can't move a certain way after you've been involved in something with real gangsters. Like these weren't rappers. These weren't. Sure, this is know, not a beef. This is a, this is a serious hit. Yeah. This these is are a people, situation. This is a, yeah, this is a guy who's actually has a reputation for murders. So this guy is like known and he's certainly not going to um you know go back to his compadres and say guess who i just got beat up by a rapper and not yeah, no, do anything that's ridiculous. about it you know so that was that was really unfortunate but tupac i think was kept it too real you know yeah i it's like another thing i noticed though and this is something that's this is something that I've kind of been like wondering, like questioning, like slash wondering people's opinions on, but I find like, like in the example of he who shall not be named, uh -huh. a lot of people like are upset because they feel like that, like a lot of people were upset when he came out, like when he came out, like like he and Nicki Minaj basically donated a large portion of the proceeds from selling their from selling their single to bail funds for protesters. Uh -huh. And a lot of people were saying, "Well, why do you want to help with criminal justice reform when you like got a bunch of black men thrown in jail?" And it kind of makes me think. Like, it kind of made me see like. I don't know, almost like a, like a sense of bitterness, like mm -hmm. about about anybody in the black community going going to jail because people are just so, I guess, sore by all of the mass, from mass incarceration. 
You know what I mean? Well, I mean, people are also, uh, I mean, look, uh, people are always looking to make someone a hypocrite also. Like, whatever, we have lots of problems with he who shall not be named. Uh, but at the same time, we also recognize that he was dealing with some people who meant to do him harm and who actually did, you know, kidnap him, right? Um, so whatever happened, if the guy wants to do something good with his money, let him do good with his money. Like, what is, so well, what, yeah. we're, we're now no, we're supposed I... to like, now we're supposed to say, oh. Qualify. Yeah, yeah no, you shouldn't not, do not that, like that because you did something messed up in your past, so who are you to like donate to the bail fund guys? That's kind of like, that's the society well, we live in. People are always that, like. But here's the thing that I'm, that I always wonder, that I'm, that I've started to wonder is that like, and now, obviously, don't get me wrong. Like, I like I one hundred percent believe that like that mass incarceration is an over incarceration of people of color is a problem. But, but I do wonder like, in the context of what of like what's going on in the country today. I do kind of wonder, like, you know, people are always talking about, like, like, the system throwing, like, throwing their boys in jail, or, like, for example, I was reading, a, I fell down a rabbit hole, like, in a message board once about, like, where people were saying, like, I'm so excited because tr like, pe like people in the black community were actually saying they would vote for Trump because of the first setback, things like that. And I guess it's like, you know. Wait, up the first setback? What? First, the criminal justice reform. Oh, oh, first step act. I see. I see. But like, I guess the point is, is that like, there's so much outrage about mass incarceration that it makes me wonder like where like where are we going to draw the line like when is it going to be considered okay to incarcerate somebody regardless of what color they are or what what race they are you know what i mean like could well, the scales tip back so far that like dangerous people are allowed on the street <laughs> were you were you were you part of our when damien was asking me about criminal justice reform uh and my I thoughts don't on remember it? Okay, let, let me repeat what I said there. Uh, the, the biggest problem with our criminal justice system is more, more than it, it's, it's racist, which it is. It, it is uh, and it's racist because the, the law seem to target minorities above and beyond anything else. And the, the recidiv recidiv I can't say the word. Reci recidivism. recidivism. Recidivism, thank you, is, is on the onus of the actual uh, corporations that profit from as many days as they can stick the people in their their jails for and they can charge the government after that so there's no there's actually no point in rehabilitation because the the, the people at the base of it the the corporations that, that own the the jails it's not to their advantage it's not to their advantage exactly so what, when we, we first we have to take back all all the prisons, all of them, per state and and federal, and then after that you have to you have to make sure that the onus is on rehabilitation, not not ju not revenge, justice, not revenge, and then you could you could fairly put people in jail if they they have committed crime, for the purpose of rehabilitating them, not for the purpose of punishing them, which is pointless. You might as well oh. throw away people's lives. I mean, it's pointless. Like, honest to God, I believe suspending kids from school was pointless. <laughs> like, yeah. I always, like, I've always believed that. I guess, like, it's an issue of, like, you know. I only believe in suspending kids if they're dangerous to the other kids. That's, that's the what only... I was going to, that's what yeah. I was going to say. Like, yeah. are we going to, like, in, like, in fighting for criminal justice reform, how do we handle people who are like, like, 
it's like we don't want to be seen as racist but what if somebody act like is an actual danger to society then then they need then they need to to go through the system like we're planning it out the the problem the problem with with there's no problem with the question you're asking because it's a logical question and people will ask that of of, of the left and the center and when we're trying to reform uh, something as big as the criminal justice system but the the truth is if we don't if we don't have the 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 stick to this to to finish off the the re, 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 the the reformation of our justice system we don't we don't have a society we don't have a society to go back to because unfortunately that reflects on everywhere. When you have one out of every black man in jail, uh, when you have one out of every 12 Hispanics in jail, uh, in, in the system, what you have is a prison nation. You don't have a, a justice system. You have a, a, a holding cell. Well, what you have is like slave labor ostensibly. Yes, absolutely. That too. Yeah. That, that too. was one of the, uh, one of the amendments, right? The 13th yes. amendment? Yes. Um, what was the number for the black men that you quoted? One out of every eight is what I've heard. Okay. And so, I've seen it several times, so I, I think it's true. Yeah. Um, well, and then people want to run their mouths and complain about like how, about like no fathers in the household. And, right, right. And well, the they're having their well, cake and eating it. Well, fault. Yeah, they're, they're having their cake and eating it too. When they say, when, and especially when they bring up stuff like black on black crime or Latino on Latino crime, I mean, that stuff, you know, it happens, but it's not, it's not to the level that it's promoted to in the media. In the media, if, if you were to trust our media, every one of our, of our, of our neighborhoods, whether it be black, Hispanic, Asian, uh, the res, are, are so dangerous that a white person merely walking through will be killed and robbed of all their all their possessions. I mean, that's that's yeah. That's that the, I would have been dead eleven years ago. Well, you and many other people who are who are more than welcome to I come. Mean, is and, that uh, is that um, stereotype being perpetuated in Asian neighborhoods oh, as well? It, well, yes and no. Asian maybe, in neighborhoods, maybe in California. In California is larger, right? Because the population yeah. of Asians is larger. So yeah. you'll have Korean neighborhoods, Chinese, China, China's overtown, that sure. sort of stuff. Sure. Yeah, as far as uh, the dangerous folks, I mean, I think the, um, I'd like to know what the, uh, the, the reformative justice, I'd like to know what some of the details are, or at least some of the anecdotes are on that stuff and how they deal with folks that are considered dangerous and 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 uh, what they do there. I mean, maybe there's- Because I have absolutely no problem with like, I have absolutely no problem advocating for, for no bail and no prison sentences for nonviolent drug yeah. offenses. Like, I think that should, I don't think that should be under the jurisdiction of the prison system, like at all. But it's when, well, they, like, they should probably you're, you're onto something. It's when gun there's a, violence gets involved. There's a theory. I, there's a theory that we should break off all the drug uh, offenses into into the drug and alcohol bureau and let them run uh, prisons that are based on rehabilitation, where everybody's going through the same thing. Uh, so there's no there's no prisoners that are. Wait, are, we're are gonna basically. let the, we're gonna let the what do you mean the ATF? The run, ATF or or some other run, organization uh, we're trust run them. To run no, no, I'm, I, I'm saying, I'm telling you, I'm telling you what, what, what's been proposed, not what yeah. I propose. He's yeah. not saying it, it's his opinion. He's repeating. No, I got, I, I got him. He, I, I, I heard what he said. I got him. Um, yeah, I'm just saying yuck to that idea. Yeah, yeah. It, it, it has, it has its appeal because you would have the same people going through the same problems, and you wouldn't have other prisoners preying on them. Um, yeah, but then I mean, we're gonna trust like. A group no. like that, ATF? No, no, like, why? No, no, no. Well, the 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 it would it wouldn't necessarily be the ATF, but it would be it would be part of our drug policy. Like I Instead. think the idea that you're proposing is that like the consequence for drug related crimes should be like drug rehab, not yes, absolutely, not a hardened. Absolutely, drug. I think we should just take these these federal like we should just get away from these 
programs that have anything to do with the state or the feds. These people are not like warm, compassionate people who give a shit about like improving. Humans. Yeah, exactly. Well, that's that. You, you know my stance on really. ICE and thing and and several other organizations that need to be dismantled. I mean, entirely. Yeah, seriously. Did you ever end up seeing that um documentary on uh? Uh, I, did not, I did not. I did not. I, 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 I was it. trying to remember the name. What was the name again? Uh, Immigrant Nation, I think. Immigrant Nation. It's on Netflix. Immigration Nation, yeah. It's on Netflix. Okay, gotcha. Yeah. I got it in my head now. Yeah, I mean, the first episode is so it's rough. eye-opening. Yeah. You, well, yeah, no, it's rough too, but it's very eye-opening. Sure. And you just see, I mean, you just see the way that they're allowed to lie to people. And yes. like... I think at one point, a few people are challenging them, like, whoa, whoa, wait a minute. Do you have a, like, do you have a warrant? And, like, unfortunately, and you see this happening to people who don't, you know, really speak the language and don't know what's really happening. At one point, he says, well, he let me in here, right? So that's, like, shit, like, that's unfortunately something they can use to their advantage. Like, once you get in, whether or not you tricked them, which is also fucked up, once you get in, the whole warrant thing kind of becomes a murky point. It becomes um, a moot point, actually. Yeah, you're right. Well, it becomes null and void. Yeah. See, even that to me is like, are we so sure about that? Like, well, I, I'm not so sure about giving people the power to null and void the need exactly. for a, exactly. for a warrants. Uh, yeah, sorry, exactly. I, I I much rather trust the judges in the, in the system than than random Yahoo, uh, uh, exactly. you know, uh, uh, agent of the law. Sorry, that's yep. not, that's not. Unfortunately, if 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 like like I said on, on when we were talking about, I, I feel like uh, like a lot of this is piecemeal. Like we talk about parts of it, and then they're disconnected from each other. Mm -hmm. But the 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 part on the police officers, more training would let would lead to more trust because you would have officers that are more in in, in tune with what the community wants them to feel. Oh, also, ICE, they're not even police officers. No, they're not. That's the other thing. But they misrepresent themselves they think they as are. police. Well, they say police even though they're not. So they're lying right away. I mean, isn't there a law against misrepresenting yourself? Shouldn't it be a federal crime to misrepresent yourself as a police it's, officer? It's a crime to misrepresent yourself as a police officer. I'm sure they think they have some kind of immunity Protection, from that. Yeah. Um, and they even have... Well, they uh, do with this president. They even have clothes. Well, they, they think that their police. cute little hats made in China really may make a fucking difference. But they're yeah. gonna learn. They're gonna learn when it when it's when it's Kam, uh, Kamala going after them. And they're gonna learn a little difference. I'm not sure the Biden will, but I'm sure Kamala will. When she's yeah. the main. When she's the let's, main. Uh, let's not. Let's not be so sure about that. I, I I'm I'm more sure, certain than I am not. So you um, think the vice president is going to like when 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 she becomes president when she becomes president or the presidential contender really you think she's going to go go against the ice i think so i think so Based considering the state she comes from and her her voting record uh okay she, she you know so yes she's she was, voted against the ice she's voted she's voted against uh the, the powers of of these of these agencies okay okay um, and I'm sorry. I know. I know people have a a, um, a, a reservation about her because she was a, a prosecutor. Yeah, but, that's, that's but, fine. but her voting record is actually what matters, in my opinion. So let me ask you this: her voting record as the uh, most liberal out of all the senators, including voting, Bernie Sanders, her, including okay. Bernie, including Bernie, including Bernie. Really? Yes. Okay. So her voting record as a senator in a very liberal district, we think is going to translate to the same policy if she were to become president. Probably. I'm not saying for sure, but I'm saying it, it's a good indication. You can only take the past as an indication of what happens in the future. Well, okay, but like, let's look at the past though. Like, she could say, well, I'm representing the whole nation now. I'm not yeah. representing liberal California. Now That's I got to take the South into account. Got to take true. the Midwest. 
into account. The thing, you know. the thing is, the thing is, Flynn, what I think, I think people are doubting her is because they think that she's going to revert to some sort of center right person. And the thing is, as the country is moving, it's moving to the left. The Overton window that, that the right likes to talk about all the time mm -hmm. is moving to the left right now because of the failures of, of what was represented as the right. So sure. even if she was just a smart politician, let's just say that. And she's looking at, at what the polling numbers say and what, what, the, what the mood of the country is. She would be wise to, 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 move herself, to move herself into conflict with the people that are holding her own ambitions back. Yeah, but I mean, we saw this with Obama. I Obama's mean, voting record was not that liberal, though. No, it wasn't. Okay. Um, no, I mean, we'll see. I, I just don't, you know. I mean, That's I, would fine. Love to, I would love to be proven wrong i just think uh you know even your mitt romney's went from uh having a liberal voting record to uh yeah but his voting record was not like like harris's either well he's a republican i mean that's that's yeah but that's i will give i will give him uh props for one thing he's one of the the most prominent republicans to come out and support blm yeah, he did that recently. He did that finally. I mean, that's definitely good. Well, and he is also the only Republican to vote in favor to convict Trump. Yes. Yeah, that's uh, that's good. I guess my point is, you know, he went from... Uh, people can change, though, Flav. People people can change their ways according to new data, new new information. Yeah, yeah. So my point was with him that he went from, you know, some kind of uh, universal health care system to, like wanting to shit on universal health care, right? Like sure, he sure. From, but know, he, was, he was the the the, to... the right was moving towards a Trump like situation. So okay. I don't blame him particularly for trying to appeal to people He was walking with the tide. Yeah, he, so he was here, not gonna fight the tide. Okay. So all all points taken, my final point on this is um what can happen and what's happened before, even in some of these places that have been uh that have been affected by like defund movements and stuff like that mm -hmm. they appear to try to do something different uh than police systems and in the end they get replaced by systems that are the same right they so replace I'm just the police with the police yeah so i'm just wondering if that's what that's what we would get from a harris uh, leadership is like great what appears like great strides in the right direction but uh, only somewhat surface level to be replaced by the same thing my response to that is that we'll just have to see I'm I'm hopeful but I, I'm always an optimist which makes I me look also, like a go ahead sorry I didn't mean to cut you off no it's okay dear I also think that like I also think that what she herself wants to do and what ends up actually happening could end up being two separate things yeah, simply yeah, because sure. not because she's not because she Chris doesn't want it to happen but because right. because the republicans are stonewalling her yeah well they're sure. going to be they, look at what mitch mcconnell did for the entire presidency of, of 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 obama it didn't matter what he did even even the things that would have benefited personally mitch mcconnell he, he stonewalled he blocked he, he held up his his uh his uh appointees to the to the bench everything so i mean that level of 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 disrespect to the system itself is is still in play all those people are still there because they're in safe zones that are they can barely be challenged yes mitch mcconnell has a challenger but no that that challenger doesn't have the uh the resources to really take on a mitch mcconnell in in their home state um so Just, uh, although second, kentucky did right elect back. kentucky did elect a democratic governor so who knows? it did it did there's, there's possibilities definitely possibilities kentucky is is a more is, is turning a little kentucky blue. is more purple than people think it is I agree, but Mitch McConnell is still, he's an institution right now. It's not, it's like, it's like saying Pelosi is going to be replaced by any of the yahoos who challenge her in the primary. 
for in 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 one of the wealthiest um, uh, parts of uh, of Ca of California. Give me a break. That's never going to happen. I know the guy AOC, the guy AOC knocked out was they was in line to be potentially the next speaker of the house after yes. Pelosi. Yes, yes, that's true. But you know that the AOC's love interest I, I, or significant other, I'll, I'll just say that, is her, is also her manager. And he ran 18 guys at a, at a time. Uh, 18 guys and girls, I should say. AOC being the most famous of them. You know how many he won? Out of 18. And, and all he did was challenge... Um, Democrats already in the system, and uh, so that my 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 point being is they get challenged all the time. Once in a while, they get challenged by somebody who knows what they're doing, and 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 puts the right candidate in the right place. Um, so, and honestly, AOC happened to be in the right place at the right the time. right place at the right time with the right mental facility to take on the big boys of Washington. Well, and the right demographic too. Cause yes. I mean, I because did, AOC could not win in, in any other district. place. Yeah, I AOC could not win in any other place. Honestly, Emily. If she was running in the South, she would have gotten destroyed. Because uh, the truth is that, that she ran as a very liberal candidate in a liberal area. But if, if the... And if the, in a very Hispanic area. Too. In a very Hispanic area. Right, exactly. So she had all the advantages, to be honest with you, to knock him off. And she had the right platform. And she's managed to follow through with it, which is even bigger to me, personally. I, I, don't, I don't... AOC? AOC. Okay. I, I'm saying that... Uh, we, we, I, was I was telling Emily that the guy who, run, who ran her campaign, who's also her significant other, ran 18 other people in that, in that same cycle. And only two people won, one including AOC. Oh, okay. Do you know who the other one? I forget. I forget. I'm sorry. It's not. It's not very memorable. I think it was. Know, it's not important. Do you know it's who not the guy really is? important good to this. What? Sure. Do you know who who he is? The the I don't know his name. Uh, the oh. uh, significant other. I oh, just okay. know of him by reputation. Riley Roberts. Yes, I think is so. It, yeah. Well, that's when on her Wikipedia page, who's listed as her boyfriend. Okay, oh, gotcha. Okay. He's also he's also our campaign manager. Okay. How much do they charge you for that shirt, Emily? I think it was like eight bucks. Oh, okay, that's a good deal. Like Very I said, it was TJ Maxx. Oh, okay. Oh, I was watching the, um, I watched the second episode of Lower Decks today. What'd you think? And I was watching the, the third. Voice. I was watching the third, but unfortunately I was distracted, so I have to watch it again. But yeah, I, I liked the second episode a lot, and I thought it might have been better than the first. I think so too. The first was pretty, pretty funny, pretty good, but it wasn't, it wasn't very groundbreaking. I think the, the mm -hmm. second one is much more groundbreaking. Yeah. Yeah, for real. I think the second one kind of solidified it as like something I, I want to, you know, yeah, something I, I was, expect good things from. I was asked by the guy who runs our show, the other show, uh, Super Geeks, mm -hmm. a little bit about you and Ish. And I was telling her, uh, him, that um, that uh, we, you, what you like, what you don't like, that sort of thing. Okay. Just to give you an update, I am working on it still. Cool. And I send him the episodes as we're done. Cool. And you told him, um, told him I thought uh, Voyager was boring. No, no, because <laughs> it, you're gonna fight Ish on that show. <laughs> Ish loves Voyager. Oh no! <laughs> it's Ish and I believe KD said they loved Voyager. I, I, yeah. What do you think about Voyager? I. You know what? Voyager had some interesting episodes, but mm -hmm. it wasn't because the crew of Voyager was interesting. It's because it starred like Q or an interesting uh, guest star. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, um, yeah. I put in the the messenger today that Lower Decks is I better, saw. Than, <laughs> better than Voyager. I thought you were going to start a fight. <laughs> I thought it was going to be a blood fight. 
You thought there was going to be a turn up? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can't, oh. I'm not cool enough to say turned up, so that's it. You I'm too much of a nerd. You weren't around for Hurricane Emily. <laughs> <laughs> well, trust me, I've been around for a lot of oddly named hurricanes that don't seem that very, very threatening. I, I've always wondered why, why they named um, hurricanes the way they do, because mm -hmm. the most vicious hurricanes are also are named like Hurricane Andrew, Hurricane Katrina. Who the hell thought of this? They don't sound right. vicious at all. Hurricane Sandy. <laughs> Hurricane Sandy sounds like she's going to come and redecorate your house. <laughs> yeah, I think there was a comedian saying that they should name them things that people are afraid of. And then he was like, you know, like Hurricane like BLM or something like that. or you know. <laughs> Hurricane Donald. Something that, yeah, something that's going to get people like to like leave their homes and take shelter and be careful. Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> But they're, they're always named such silly things. Hurricane George. George? George is not scary at all. What are you talking about? If it was like Hurricane Desmond, you'd be terrified. Well, you know, I'm sure when there was Hurricane Maria, I'm sure oh, there yeah. were That's a, lot scary of people that were, <laughs> a lot of people that were afraid. My, my grandmother was named as Maria, so, and she was a scary say, woman. She was, was a scary say, woman. I was going to say, especially in Arizona, except they don't get hurricanes. In Arizona. No, no, they don't even believe in like global warming or global right. climate change. I should say, it's a more more appropriate term right now because yeah. the, the the weather never changes here. It's it's always hot and it's it never hot rains. and dry. Yeah, and it's like people only believe in what they can see. Absolutely, absolutely. Even though it it affects us here because the the more dry and heat there is, that means the weather is stirring somewhere else. It's just the nature of weather. Yeah. And so, like, we see it in other places. Like, we see the, the, the fires and the floods in California and the East Coast, and it, mm -hmm. and it doesn't seem to have much of an effect on the population here. Does it make the cactus grow slower or faster? Or? Who knows? Who knows about that fact? I think you should see some of the immortal cactus that have been around here, though. Things that have been you, around for, like, 200 years. Did you ever eat, did you ever eat cactus? Yeah, it's pretty good if they prepare it right. Yeah. I've had cactus strips. Better than better than onion rings. Oh yeah, for sure, for sure. Um, it's just you know cactus have kind of a sacred cow sort of a um, thing here. Like okay. even people that don't care about the environment, if they mm -hmm. have to move an old cactus, people get ornery about it. Really? And pissed off. Yeah, nobody likes that. What do you mean if you have to move an old cactus? Well, like uh, we have a lot of development going on in, in, um, in the area I'm in. So if they yeah. if they move a cactus or knock it down, people get real pissed off. And I'm talking about like gun toting our our voters, not not oh, not, wow. not not our not our side. No. And what do you mean by move it? Well, they'll move it to like uh, another location, but sometimes the moving kills it. Yeah, I was gonna say I didn't even know you could move. You a can. It just only the most careful companies do it. Uh, a lot of people just knock it down and, and whatever. Aren't there, aren't there roots or something? Or? There are roots. There are very deep roots. Oh, wow. That sounds not easy to do. No, it's not. It's, it's not. But they, they tend to, they tend to kind of overpower it. Like I've seen them using um, cranes and lifts and, and heavy machinery to kind of gather the majority of, of the roots up and right. plop it down somewhere else. It's, it's kind of vicious when you think about it. Yeah, I was going to say, how can you get to the roots like that? Well, you just you just take the whole sediment with you, and right, then you right. move it to the to the front of like like usually there's a front kind of display of cacti and uh, whatever in the in the uh, in the in the in the housing districts that they mm -hmm. make up here. So yeah, or a park or something like that. They they they'll usually plan for something that looks natural, mm. sort of. Sort of, kind of. <laughs> well, as natural as McMansions can get, really. Yeah. McHouses, I should say, not McMansions. That's always the sad thing with that kind of development. It's like, at least try a little harder. Like, 
Some people, people do. Some people do. Uh, yeah. But some people, the, you could tell certain development companies really could care of a shit. They're they're looking at everybody like a price, and they don't mm-hmm. care once they sell it. It could go into the, into the hell's mouth. But yeah. they they really could care less. At least some developers have like Pride. five or six different styles. Yes. And then you can alternate between those or. Yeah, so usually, usually each uh, development is somewhat similar to the last one, but uh, but they they have their own kind of little flavor. Like they might have purple house uh, roofs uh, instead of the the sort of tan everything normal. Well, well, no. What I mean is like, um, like diversity within the development. Oh, so you mean of, uh, biodiversity? Instead, well, no, no, no. So I mean, oh, instead sorry. of going into a development and every freaking house looks boringly the same sure. you have like six different styles to choose from so you can at least like switch all it i can think of is the opening sequence to weirds now <laughs> yeah yeah it's but, very simple but you know what i mean though instead of like yeah. walking into a development and every house looks the same at least you have like five or six different styles usually to from. You, in these in these type of situations flave you have about four to five styles right of houses they're not. Right. They're not different. Like they're not wildly different. Like you're not going to get a um, uh, a terracotta uh, right. uh, kind of thing next to sure. um, a, a pueblo style uh, right. house. You sure. know. Yeah, I got you. But they're they they are slightly different. I I I've never been a homeowner. I usually rent. Uh, mm-hmm. Because uh, unfortunately, we're at that age where you know it's more difficult to own, which mm-hmm. is another another point I, I have to make. That's another uh, problem. <laughs> that's another problem. That I I definitely think that we, for our generation and below, it, if we don't start making things more available to purchase as ownership, we won't have a future as an economic co- powerhouse. And the well, reason that's I why say we got to go with uh, socialized housing as soon as possible. I don't believe in socialized housing, though. Because I, I, it's not ownership. Socialized housing, like everybody. Yeah, it's not in ownership, the and then you ha- then you set up another government institution to manage the socialized housing, and mm. I, I I I think that with ownership, with personal, with help, with the personal ownership of right. these houses, including things that are already existing, like project developments, I think that they should sell that to the occupants. That way, the occupants then have collateral, and they then have a future. Sure, uh, I can I can dig I can dig that. Some nitro that. developments have become have gone co-op. Yes, mm. yes, I, I definitely like that. I definitely like that and support that uh, because yeah. I, I I honestly think if we don't if we don't give people an out to their to their problems by by our design by the outside world's design, then they're going to mm-hmm. find their own reasons and their own reasons are going to lead us back to the discussion on criminal justice. And and that's not that's not fun at all. It's going to lead us back to square one. Going to lead us wait. back to square one. Wait, what do you what do you mean? Well, l- let me let me be perfectly blunt. A, a family will do anything to feed itself, and I, and the law is just so, like a, a significant barrier to that uh, most of the time. So, if you don't give people an economic way out, if you don't give them a, a, a way to better themselves, education. Uh, uh, economic opportunities, uh, travel, that mm-hmm. sort of thing, then yeah. then things will happen that you will not like in that in that neighborhood or that or that development. No, I definitely get that. I mean, I guess the idea. Of I'm socialize... not saying that these people are crime criminal. I'm saying no, that, no, that, get, that anybody I... will do anything to feed their family. Yeah, well, I get that's kind of like the idea of socialized housing is like getting rid of that cost. But I I definitely do agree with. Um, you know, giving people a chance to build uh, their wealth. I definitely their equity. Yes. Yeah. That I I, I heavily agree. I I have spoken out against both libertarians and Green Party members who who some believe like you do. The libertarians say it's not. I'm I'm just giving free houses, which is not the truth. Uh, I, you know, I, I, I'm I'm you put like like what my 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 system would be something like i would love to take a city that has project housing already and sell it back to the occupants at at a very reduced price at a very manageable price so that they're paying mortgages instead of rents or or anything like that that way they're building their equity in their family and they can pass that down to family to family well i mean nature housing 
we'd have to do something about that housing. And I mean, when I talk about socialized housing, I don't just mean like, you know, putting people in projects. I mean like, I mean like intentionally building like nice places for people to live. Yeah, of course, of course. Like government course. style, like, like the, the same style of housing that, you know, government workers often get to live in. Right. Right. And, and what I'm saying is that maybe we should be in the business of, 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 of both um, supporting the building of those houses, then facilitating the sales of those houses to yeah. the people that, that sure. most need it in order to get a leg up in society. Yeah, but when can, you say like when you say like socialized housing, you mean like on a like for example, for example, like my mother-in-law lives in a condominium on Stanford's campus. That's basically like Stanford owns the land, but Stanford professors will buy equity into it. You're talking about something like that, but on like a larger scale across the country through the government or. Um, yeah, I don't really know about the Stanford. I don't know enough about Stanford to really speak on it. But yeah, I mean, basically, uh, when I talk about socialized housing, it would be similar to like Medicare for all or um, similar to, uh, uh, to uh, a single payer except, except for housing, you know, instead of uh, medicine it would be like housing for all you know i like mean i think that to... could i think that could work like if there was choice involved because because i remember like choice of where you're gonna live involved because for example i remember something i mean this isn't quite the same but it's kind of similar like misha was telling me a story about how like apparently when he was in high school his teachers were commuting like half an hour 45 minutes because they couldn't like the, they were teaching in palo alto and teachers didn't get paid well enough to live in palo alto california okay and and the school board's proposed solution was literally to build was literally and this never happened but was literally they proposed building subsidized housing for teachers in Palo Alto that would where they, where they were like, teaching where they yeah where they were teaching that would uh -huh. sell for like less than like whatever the that would go for like whatever less than whatever the median home price yeah. was and yeah. the, but the, but the teachers it never ended up happening because the teachers kind of like for lack of a better term shit a brick about that idea because they didn't want to be like forced into practically living in like a dorm with their like <laughs> with their co-workers so i think like right. like those pro like those types like it was a good thought but mm -hmm. what they should have been doing was like subsidizing like was giving them subsidies to buy to buy a house right right not like yeah i agree just with that. building an apartment building for them right so that's i guess like a pitfall that like maybe needs to be addressed like if there were to be a socialized housing thing so that program so that people aren't like you know categorized by the government into I mean, I think that's very places. interesting. So, like, for instance, you know, half an hour to 45 minutes away in some places, that's not much of a commute at all, right? That's but, less of a commute than I have. Yeah, than most people in New York City or uh, a lot of people in New York City. But imagine they're going to put you even closer than that. Like, imagine they're going to put you only, like, 10 minutes away in this system that they're describing, I mean, was that system going to be that bad? Like, maybe they like shit on something that uh, maybe they should have been more open to. Was, yeah. was it going to be that bad to was... be living in the same building with other teachers? Like, oh no, a building well, full I of teachers. Was... <laughs> that's 
That doesn't sound very wild. Yeah. No, but I think, I don't think it's that though. Like, I think it was, I think A, I think they poo pooed it kind of because how, because it was presented kind of condescendingly, I guess, by the, by, by the uh, bureaucracy, by the school board, like yeah, where right. like the school board president was like, "Wouldn't it be fun to be just like living in a dorm with your coworkers?" <laughs> and people uh, are like, "That's the last and, thing I want to do." And the, yeah, exactly. They said the, people, they said the D word. Like, that wasn't. Yeah, saying the D word probably wasn't. The people best. were like, "That's the last thing I want to do is live in a dorm with my, with my coworkers." And yeah. I don't completely. I mean, I don't completely blame. Yes, like, you know, a building of teachers is not, like, the worst place in the world, but I don't blame people for not necessarily, for wanting to, like, not run into people that they work with after hours, either. Right. Which is, like, honest to God, that's, that's one of my big sticking well, points I mean, for wanting to stay the, in the city. I mean, what was the, what were the parameters of this, of these buildings? Was it only for one particular school or was it for the whole district or what was it because if it's okay. for the whole district your chances of running into someone you know i don't know depend on the size of the city uh you know the parameters of the building well let's put it this way in new york like the chance of you live if, if a program like that were enacted in new york the chance of like living in a building with the people that you're teaching with is is close to nil, even if it is all teachers in the building. Just well, it depends. So is it one school or is it a whole district? But the I point is, it was a district, right? It was a district, but it's not a large district. Like you gotcha. can't put together a whole building of people and have each and every one of them work in a different school. Yeah. Like. Inevitably, I think it was just like an idea of like. Well, it also depends on the size of the building too, right? See, there's a lot of there's a lot of variables. If you're talking about uh, a huge, yeah. monstrous, if you're talking about a a NYCHA size level uh, apartment building, then and you're only talking about a couple of schools, then yeah, you you might run into all the teachers you know in this huge ass building with hundreds of uh people units in it. yeah sure yeah like i think they and were their legit, families i think they were legit talking about like cramming all the teachers in the district into like two nitro like apartment buildings and i think that yeah. they felt like patronized by the almost you know what i mean yeah well you know i um I would have just asked for more information. I think that's what um, uh, Flav is um, uh, getting at, is that they, they, they kind of pooed it before, uh, before seeing all the information on it. Well, again, oh. I mean, I, I don't know. I wasn't there. I'm sorry. Right, this right. is a second-hand well, also, story. Also, my question is, what is the relationship between the quality of a building and its size? Maybe there's no relationship. Maybe there's like right, tons right. of huge buildings that are pristine and beautiful and just taken care of. And then, you know, maybe there's no relationship. I don't think there's a relationship because there's buildings in, there's buildings in Midtown that are just as large as a NYCHA um, building that are very well kept. Right, right. Yeah, it's, it's all about organization, especially on that scale. So if you have a if you have a significantly good organization managing the project, then you should be fine. Um, right. uh, I don't I don't see the I, I also don't see the relationship between a big building and, and its service. You could have the, a small building and it could be horrible. You could have a big building and it could be Trump Tower. Uh, don't say right. to say you know uh, sure. for quality anyway. And maybe that's another thing. Maybe they uh, maybe they choose a style of building that sprinkles, you know, a bunch of, uh, you know, a bunch of uh, apartments in different buildings circling, you know, the school or the school district. So it's, uh, maybe it works yeah, out. Yeah, I, I don't, I don't even see why they can't do a half and half with, with a, 
with a corporate, with a public company. Like, you know, build a building, make it big, and, and then have part of the uh, apartments for the teachers and part of it for sale to support that, 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 that public service. Right. I mean, I think they should have just given, the, I think they should have just, if they were going to take the money to build a building, I think they should have just given the money directly to the teachers to defray the cost of housing, but that's just me. No, that's, that's pretty, that's a, the easiest solution, to be honest with you, Emily. I'm surprised it wasn't brought up. To be to be completely honest with you. Yeah, no, me too. Well, actually, like, but I think, I mean, I don't know. Again, like, secondhand story. I don't really. Guys, I'm gonna have to go uh, soon, so I, I don't know if you guys want to continue or. No, I think this was a good. Uh, no, I think this was a a really good session. I think if yeah, we'll me wrap too. It up I really, we'll have I really it. liked it. Yeah. All right, guys. You guys take care. Okay. All right. All right. Have a good one. Good night.